This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. The layer shader can be applied to any object of course, but it looks especially interesting when using it for garment and visualizing the pleats. In order to see the pleats probably we need some cloth. So we start with something which has to do nothing with shading but with creating <laughs> pleats maybe. We go to FX here and um, here we have N cloth. We're gonna create, um, well just this disk here is just fine. Uh, we need a little bit more resolution here. Don't use that slider, please. If you move that slider to over values of 10, Maya might crash because the resolution will be just enormously high. 5 is just enough for this. And now we um, want it to collide with something and uh, we can choose for example this cylinder here, we'll rotate it just a little bit so it gets more interesting. Scale this up, should look nice. And now we make this an end cloth, create end cloth. In order to make it collide with the cylinder we need to select the end cloth and the cylinder with a control key, we select it in both. And now we go to back to end cloth and create a passive collider. Uh, this is already a very nice simulation as you can see and I think we can just stick to this really or maybe make the cloth a little bit bigger. Excellent. Um, I can easily live with that and now we can uh, copy it or duplicate it, Control D and delete all the rest because we don't need it anymore. It served its purpose. So we have no simulation anymore. We can just move this a little bit up and put it in a box in order to do some fancy rendering. The box is this and scale it up massively and delete right mouse click two faces. This one and that one delete so we can look inside that box, right mouse click object mode and we move the whole thing up like this. So we have our garment sitting here. Now it waits for a layer, layered shader. How do we go about this? Well, there are several ways to do uh, this. Uh, I prefer something very abstract and I'm gonna do it in an abstract way now. So let's click here. This opens the hypershader, this icon here, hypershade, important. And um, we want to create two shaders in order to pump them into their values of their color values into a layer shader. So how do we start? Uh, press the key tab just briefly and you get this entry field here. And we want an AI, Arnold that is, um, layer shader. It's right here. So this is um, something we can apply to our cloth. Right mouse click, assign existing material, a layer shader. Now in order to see this properly, uh, when we render it we have no light in the scene, but we can uh, introduce a light here, a sky dome light for example, which wraps around the whole scene. And now um, we don't see the texture here, even if we click here we don't see it, but we can choose the Arnold render option here in the viewport. And we can make it run and this is what we get. The layer shader delivers a black texture because there's nothing, no color information entering the shader. So here it is again. This is the shader we're dealing with. Actually this one. This is uh, how it applies to 
geometry. So this is the one we have. We have inputs and outputs. This is sky dome light, which we don't need to see here. Uh, we have inputs and outputs. The out color goes into the cloth object, the garment. The input is empty. There's nothing going into that layer shader yet. That's why we press tab again and create an AI standard surface shader. AI ST, when I type this, I already see it right here. And I want to duplicate it. So I have two identical um, surface shaders. Edit duplicate shading network. This command is different from the control D command. When you contr use control D you uh, duplicate objects in the scene but not here in the hypershade window as far as I know. The, the new shaders come with a, this node which we don't need really because we have this one. Actually let's change the color here. Make this green. Horrible. And by the way, you can navigate in this scene with the same keyboard shortcuts and the mouse as uh, with uh, in, a, in an ordinary scene. But you cannot, of course, uh, rotate uh, in the scene because or dolly around in the scene because uh, there's a flat surface here. Uh, the second one, we can make it um, red. Okay, two horrible col colors, really. They don't have an influence here yet because we need to connect them to the layered shader. And that's what we're going to do next. So um, here is the layer shader. It has inputs hardware color and normal ca uh, camera. This is not interesting for us, but I'll show you that we have many more options. So let's um, pick the out color, click here, and use this wonderful yellow line here and feed it into that white big circle and you choose other. We want to feed the first standard su surface shader into the input number one. And the input number one is not visible here because we haven't activated it yet. But now it's there. And we do the same thing with this one, with the shader number two. Go to that one here because we want to feed it into input number two now looks all nice and clean so what do we have now all of a sudden our cloth turned green why is that well here we have layer one which is the green one and here we have layer two which is the red one it's disabled so let's enable it so we have a red one the default Arnold shader which is always a little bit too glossy I think uh, now we have two sliders. One is this one. Doesn't have an effect. Why not? Because we need to reduce this one here. Now we can mix the two colors. More yellow, more red. Very yellow, very red, and very green. Now we want to map this mix with a file texture. And that's the key to what we want to achieve, really. Because the mixing option in the layer shader is just excellent. So let's go back to our hyper shader. Tab. And we want to create a file texture. File texture. It's that node. This is important. It's a placement of our file texture. Let's click on the file texture. Here we need to input or show Maya the path to a, an image name. And I prepared uh, a few things here. Um, I created a, a subfolder in my source images folder called black and white stamp. When you go to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, you see under modeling and sculpt, uh, the sculpting stamps, you see uh, quite a few of them, like 20. And I put uh, some of them, the black, some of the black and white ones, into my source images folder. Let's click here again, and I'm in that subfolder, and here I see the thumbnails. And for example, 
I can use the black and white leaf vein. Open. Has anything changed? No, not at all, because we didn't feed this information into our mix option of the layer shader. Since this is a black and white image, we don't need that three-dimensional color information, uh, red, green, and blue. We can, we could do this, but uh, out alpha is just a single um, one-dimensional value, and we want to put it in here so out alpha and back to that big dot here other and here we have the mix one or two we can choose e either of the two and now we have a different pattern here which already looks very nice i told you that the placement node is important so it's right here so when you select it you can always use the attribute editor here so you so you see things properly here in the in the view if you repeat that pattern by factor 2 and factor 2 you see the stamps more properly if you increase this to 100 by 100 you get a very very fine structure like this quite beautiful really now let's let's leave it like this and um, go back to the main material that is to the standard surface shader number one which is the green one so let's reduce the weight now here the specular weight and introduce some sheen color the sheen weight is currently set to zero Let's increase this. And you see that green tone appearing here. It depends on the camera angle, really, but it's always there now. You can change the roughness. If you reduce this roughness, you get more, more or less sharp greenish edges here. If you increase the roughness, it's more spread all over the field. For example, this part here is all sort of greenish now because of that sheen effect. I think we need more light, so let's increase the intensity to 2. And now we can play with all the factors which we have here. Why has the color no effect here? Well, it does. It's all about that mixing process. And you can map that color with something funky like, for example, the crater. So you have two textures, actually three, mixing with each other. Use the placement node in order to place it properly. Since it's a 3D placement, when you scale it down, the pattern repeats more often. And if you want the dots on the on the cloth to not appear, not cover the whole object, you go back to the placement node, which is not the, this is the crater, which we just introduced that one, but we have the other one here. That's the file and this is the placement. If you reduce the coverage from 1 to say 0 0.3 the dots are almost gone 0 0.8 now they reappear you see them they come from the top if you rotate this whole structure here you get this effect and if you desperately want some gold in the scene Go back to one of your shaders, for example the first one, the green one. Go to presets and here you have gold. Replace and now you have a golden tint for the crater structures. And with this I'll leave you alone now. Have a very good day. Bye bye.